morning, everyone. Good to see y'all again and some new faces. Glad to have you here. I wasn't planning to have the opening this morning, but Joe didn't show up, so or he had something happen, I guess. So Since it was my turn next, I guess. Default it to me. Um, could we rise for prayer? Father in heaven, thank you for this day that you've given us and thank you for the freedom and the opportunity to gather together and encourage one another and just pray that you would be amongst us here and pray that everyone would be edified by the things that are shared and read. Just pray that you would strengthen us and help us to be zealous for you and continue following you to the end of our lives. I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Since I didn't really have anything lined up, I just, it was just, I don't know, not that long ago that I knew he wasn't coming, but, so I just looked a little bit through my Bible and I saw Matthew chapter 18, and not because of, it's just about forgiveness and just different things, you know, people that have divided over various things, opinions, or things they think are doctrine, I guess, or other things, and so it just kind of stuck out to me, and I guess something that I think about quite a bit about all the divisions among people and why why they can't get along with each other and maybe it's also because they don't follow the proper method of reproving you know they don't go to the people and talk out the differences and things like that so I'll just go ahead and read it and, and maybe comment some things and, and brethren can share At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, whom he put among them, and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the hell of fire. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. Do you think, what do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he reju rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that ne never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, 
so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, show it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished, wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seized him by the throat. He said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should not you have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in, in his anger his Lord handed him over to, the, to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also... Do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So there's quite a bit in that chapter. Or it, or anyways, like the first part is like talking about being humble, which um, I guess maybe the to- topic that I'm thinking about is like relationships with, you know, brethren, like people that are proud and think, you know, their their ideas or what they believe or whatever is to be held above what the others um, what the other people's or the other brethren think. And uh, so it's it's good to be humble think higher of ourselves than we should. And um, and I guess the thing about putting a stumbling block in front of someone that's um, I guess that can be looked at several different ways too in a like in a relationship, you know, like if someone, I don't know, like if someone would think something has to be this way and the other people would, I don't know, you'd say they're weak or whatever or something and then the other people would, you know, bear with that or maybe even change some of the way they would do things for that person so as not to cause that person to leave the faith and it could also be the other way too you know that um, that maybe he should listen to some some other brothers as well but it I hope that I never put a stumbling block before anyone 
because of things that I do. And I guess if people think that I do such, do something like that, they I hope I'm open to take correction on it. Or I want to be open. I don't know. And then like the lost sheep, um, the parable there. Um, I guess like, I don't know, you know, there's a limit, but like people that have left or, you know, to try and reach out to people that have left or that we make contact with, people that are seeking. So I guess that's a little bit of a weakness of mine is to keep in contact with people once I'm no longer around them. I don't know, I guess I'm not too good at making phone calls or emails and stuff, so I've been trying to do a little better, but it's kind of hard. And then like the in verse 15 where it's talking about reproving others, um, I just had a thought, like, instead of using brother here, just use the member of the church, and I guess I just want to clarify, that's not like a, a member of, like, a church, like, that's the universal church or whatever the world over, It's what I believe, it's not like a, a lot of churches have, you know, their membership, and But I think it's very important, like, to follow that. You know, like, if you have some doubts or questions about someone, it's good to go talk directly to the person, not not build a profile against them or something. And maybe even talk to other people behind their backs and whatever else can happen when sometimes it's just simple communication that can resolve issues. And then, like, where Peter asks about how often he should forgive, like seven times. I guess he doesn't say in a day here, but some of the other passages it'll say, like, in a day. Um, and I guess some places, or some translations, or you could translate it as 70 times seven. Here they use 77 times, which would still be, a, if that was in a day, that's still a lot of times, like, that'd take lots of forbearance, I guess, depending what kind of grievances or um, sins or whatever you call it against you. And then I think this next parable is directly relating to that question. Because, like, God forgave us, you know, forgives us, and then we want to hold, you know, just something small against someone else. I mean, 10,000 talents is, let's see if they got a, talent was worth more than 15 years wages of a laborer. So, 10,000 times 15 years is how much he owed. And this other guy had, you know, just 100 days. A hundred, yeah. You know, like a hundred days worth, so... I guess that could be a comparison between what we... We owe God, or however you want to say that, and what other people owe us, maybe. Like, it's no comparison. Like, we deserve eternal, eternal death or whatever. I guess that's about all that I have on that. Brothers want to comment on that? Or something else? <clears throat> yeah, thanks for the reading of that chapter. I think we do well to, 
to consider those parables and in that chapter often. Um, I think the the parable there at the end. Uh, no, it's not quite the one at the end, but the one about that's not a parable, I guess. Just the instruction about how to how to deal with it if. If a brother sins against you, uh, to to go and speak with him by yourself. If he doesn't hear you, uh, take a couple brothers and, or yeah, two or three brothers with you, and and then if you don't still doesn't hear you, bring it before the church. Like there's a, I think there's just a very important principle there of like keeping. <clears throat> Keeping a an issue that's specifically an issue that's between you and a brother, like keeping it small, if if you can contain it. Um, love covers a multitude of sin, and if if you really love this brother, and your 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 heart is that he would he would be one, like the first and immediate goal is not to just expose everything and and reveal everything negative you can about this brother to the whole church, but to to win him over and. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, you know, you just need help from a few other brothers. Um, that's just so important, I think. I think that that's, um, yeah, just very important. Another thought I had is, regardless whether the proper translation is 77 or 7 times 70, or 70 times 7, like, it has nothing to do with keeping track until you come to either 77 or 490. Um, I remember this little devotional from years ago. The title was 490, then what? And this, this little boy, when he figured out that it's 70 times, 7 times that he has to forgive this guy, he started keeping track. And oh boy, once he hit 490, he was going he's gonna to seek his revenge. And <laughs> just, it's pretty obvious. Jesus... Jesus was uh, um, talking about a, just having a, a continual forgiving, forgiving heart uh, towards him. I'm just thankful to be reminded of these passages. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lloyd. It's <clears throat> Brother Walter. Boy, <sighs> she called Matthew Moses the other day. So don't don't. It's all right. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Brother Walter Jr. I'm sorry. I had to rub it in on you. But, <laughs> and no, it was great. That's devotion. It speaks for itself, Brother, what, what it does. And I'll just make one comment or two. Uh, Brother Dwayne made a tape about four or five, oh, a few years ago, uh, in a Baptist idolatry. And in that lesson, he mentioned about unless you become as a little child and... Uh, uh, he said, like in John 3, Nicodemus, we can't, they have a born-again church. How about have a, a little child church? And, uh, and he used Ruth. He read a couple of chapters from the book of Ruth. Ruth had to forget everything she knew to become like a little child. You know, your God will be my God. Your, I'll lodge where you do. I'll never leave you. And she clung, she clung to Naomi. And also uh, Paul said the same thing. I count all things as lost, or all things as done. He had to forget everything. And Nicodemus, and Dwayne has to, and Leroy has to, and you have to, Walter Jr., and I have to. We have to be like little children. Uh, the other, and so many good things about the word speaks for itself. Sarah read last night to me, uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, another fluff book. Yeah, but I get him free. I get him, Walter. I get, I get him free. But it was about a five-year-old boy that... Um, <clears throat> His neighbor, the old man neighbor, uh, his wife just died, so it was a, uh, he was a widower. And they were kind of close, this family had a little five-year-old boy, and uh, the man, the old man, he just lost his wife. So the little boy went over to, uh, to the neighbor's house after his wife died, just, just to, uh, I guess, you know, to, to see him. And so then uh, the mother said, when he come back, it was just after his wife died at the funeral, said, why did you go over there? And he said... <clears throat> The five-year-old boy, well, I just went over to cry with him. 
And that's the way a little child can, can, he went over to cry with him. And we should be able to humble ourselves in all those things. The Lord be magnified.